On every number plate in my mother's native state of New Hampshire in the United States, there is a bold exhortation. Live free or die. Quite something. The phrase breathes the revolutionary fervor of the struggle to throw off colonial rule. But what, you may ask, does it mean when endlessly repeated as one drives through the orderly highways of a region of lakes and forests and mountains, or when one looks at a car parked neatly outside a rather lovely old clapperboard house. And behind these come more fundamental questions, such as what does it mean to be free? And how can we achieve freedom? Freedom, like motherhood, like apple pie, is generally approved of. But it's never quite as simple as it seems. It works rather better as a slogan than as a project. There are always constraints in life, the social environment in which we function, or the personal attributes we've been dealt and the things that other people project onto us. You can't live alongside other people and be completely free. You can't do everything you want. For example, if you have no money. During this summer, we've been mulling over what it means to be free and using the prompts provided by our current art exhibition, work by eight artists. These currently surround us here in the cathedral. The artist whose work I've been asked to reflect upon today, at the end of this sequence, is Lucy Jones. There are four of her paintings on the wall of the south transept at the south nave aisle for most of you on your right. Lucy Jones is not someone I had heard of. Quick investigation shows her to be something of a high achiever. She graduated uh, decades ago with a first class degree. She subsequently won a scholarship to study abroad for a year or two. She has, and this is no mean achievement for anyone, made a career as an artist. But when I look at the uh, descriptions of her, such as those on the legends underneath those four paintings, what jumps out at me out at me from those descriptions is the information that she was born with cerebral palsy. Do I need to know that? Does knowing it give me a better or a worse engagement with her art? Works of art are in the, to a degree independent of the artist. Once a book or a picture is released into the world, it has a life of its own. Other people will respond to these things as they will. And I, for one, would rather know Lucy Jones through her achievements, through the things she's chosen to put out into the world, than by her physical characteristics. So it was interesting to read elsewhere that she felt her early education was much more frustrated by dyslexia, which is invisible to the outside gaze and took some years therefore to be discerned, than it was by her cerebral palsy, which everyone could see. 
Both conditions may be a part of her, but such things define neither the person nor the art. So to those works. The four paintings which are on display here were done during the recent period between 2020 and 2022 when every one of us lived with limitations, lockdowns, social distancing, and so on. Whatever our past experience, whatever our attributes, we all lost some freedom. And we still live, to some extent, with the rumbling aftershocks of those times and those losses. So when thinking about these four paintings, which are all landscapes, what strikes me about them are spaciousness and vibrancy, fields and hills, haystacks, trees, color, rain, rivers, skies. Barely a building and not a person in sight. Delving a little into the artist's biography, I find that Lucy Jones grew up in London. But these images arise from her present home, which is in Shropshire, the place where she has chosen to live. And they convey to me a sense of liberation from the smallness, the immediateness and denseness of urban life and they speak of the dynamism of the outside world at a time when human experience was so limited. To be free involves being able to make choices. It involves breaking boundaries with which we have grown up. And it may be involves overcoming the preconceptions of those who are around us. Some of those preconceptions, some of those things which limit us, can be friendly, kindly. When Peter took Jesus aside, he meant well when he told him that he must never be the victim of the fate he described. For Peter's pains, Jesus called him Satan, a stumbling block. Kindness and freedom are not always comfortable bedfellows. Jesus, of course, chose the harder way, the way of the cross. He chose to live free and die. I always feel a certain irony when I pontificate on the visual arts because I come to them with an almost total lack of personal stake in the matter. I have no training, no skills, no achievements, either as a child or as an adult. And I am therefore to that degree a free agent, free to experience and to assess and even to pontificate on the works of others. It's a bit like being in a sweet shop, really. I can take what I like. That speaks of a certain bounty. The work, the works of others. That bounty arises out of the creative generosity of God who provides his creation with gifts which are ours to develop and to explore. Other people may have been able to make a great deal more of their gifts than I have, but I have a share in their gifts. 
To be a human is to have potential. And to be a human in society is dynamic. It's forged by interaction. It is to some extent untamed. God has made things, all things, dynamic. And by that he gives us the possibility of freedom. So, in one other layer of irony, these landscapes of Lucy Jones, though empty of people, remind me of how much richer life is because we live in society. We are made in the image of the maker, potentially generous, potentially creative. This is our chance to thank God for the fruits of that creation, some of which we've been exploring this summer. And also to thank God for the challenges which are posed by that freedom. It is good, it is right to question ourselves and others when there is temptation to confine our fellow creatures through our own limited perceptions of them. Amen.